is the journey. This year, you are landing in your wealthy place. Oh, no matter how rough is the journey of your health, finances, business, by the end of this year, you will be talking from your wealthy place. In the name of Jesus. Today is a covenant day of fruitfulness and also a countdown service to Shiloh 2021. Counting from today, we are 35 days away from Shiloh 2021. 35 days away, say after me, I am set for all ransom settlement. I am set for all settlement. Say, I am set for all ransom settlement encounters. I am set for my all ransom settlement package. In Shiloh 2021, I'm on a flight to all ransom settlement. Give Jesus a big hand. As we look forward to the Shiloh this year, God asked me to tell you, it shall be a Shiloh of all rand settlement. I mean all rand settlement. No part of your life will be left unsettled. Amen. You didn't hear me. No part of your life will be left unsettled. Amen. The Lord asked me to tell you it shall be for you a Shiloh of all grand settlement. Amen. Somebody shouted, it shall be for me and my house, it shall be for me and my house. a Shiloh of all ranch settlement. Walk up to three people and say to them, it shall be for you. All ranch settlement. A Shiloh of roundabout settlement. The Lord asked me to tell you, no part of your life will be left unsettled. And we have the privilege of having our father, God's servant, Pastor Femi Emmanuel, the big masquerade, coming to Shiloh this year. Hey, do you see what I'm saying? All right, settlement. All right, settlement. <laughs> Sit down. We are so privileged to have a great man of God. You have not met him, so be looking forward to meeting him. And when I say you have not met him, look forward to meeting him. Apostle Ali, very humble person from Ibadan, dangerously anointed. You know, if I was a coach, I would not have to source for good players. Because I source for players that play in Champions League. <laughs> and trophy back to back. Back to back. It is not by power God led me to bring all this people. Apostle Leia Lee, somebody that you will love to hear again and again and again and again and again and again and never tired. It's dangerously anointed with prophetic grace. So I like it to please. And it's very humble. This time around, the Shiloh is taking us to Ibadan. 
Praise God. How many of you know that I have a lot of connectivity at Ibadan? Ibadan is my base. I was actually born in Ibadan. I'm not from Ibadan. But I was born in Ibadan. He met to Allah during barracks. My birth certificate carries UCH Ibadan. No, he met to Allah during hospital, military hospital. So, and I grew up to become a man in Ibadan. Got married at Ibadan. Eh? My first child at Ibadan, ordained at Ibadan, started my ministry at Ibadan, found my path at Ibadan. So if God is leading us to Ibadan to bring people, it tells you that God is going to deal with foundational problems in this Shiloh. Get ready. By the end of this Shiloh, it will be evident that God has settled you. I'm prophesying to someone by the end of this Shiloh, it will be evident that heaven has settled you. People will call themselves to come and see, and they will say, See the man whom God has settled. Okay, not the, the man is not here. They will call themselves and they come and see who the man God has settled. People will begin to beckon on the set. Come and see the woman God has settled. Come and see the business God has settled. It is your all run settlement package. They will look at your life and see and see the glory of God and they will say this is the man God has settled. This is the sister God has settled. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11 I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and be a young. I will make you inhabited as in former times and do better for you than at your beginnings. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I will multiply you. I'm reading the King James Version. He said, and I will multiply you up upon you man and beast and shall increase and bring you. Are you I said, and I will said to you after your old estate and we do better unto you. I don't know if that person is, is here or is still on his way but God is speaking to somebody by his word this morning. I will multiply upon you man and beast. When he's talking about you, he will give you the gift of men. He will expand your business. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will say to you after your old estate. Somebody said, the Lord said, he will do better for you on today than at your beginning. Your latter will be greater than your former. Hey, you didn't hear me. All things are going to be possible. And your latter end shall be greater than the former. Amen. Your latter end shall be greater than the former. Amen. The year 2021 will end for you a year of oral settlement. Amen. It will be for you a year of oral settlement. Amen. Testimonies of oral settlement. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our first part of the settlement package is in the area of fruitfulness. Look at what it said, Ezekiel 36 verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. I will multiply upon you man and beast. Multiplication is a proof of fruitfulness. And he said, it will increase your multiplication. 
and they will bring fruit unto you. Fruit. Bearing fruit. Therefore, every case of barrenness in any area of your life comes under swift judgment today. Amen. Don't joke with you. Amen. Every case of barrenness in every area or any area of your life comes under swift judgment today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every yoke at work in your life sponsoring barrenness promoting dryness comes under swift judgment. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest say amen. amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest say amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever has vowed never to see you grow. Whoever has vowed never to see you be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. By the mandate of judgment I came with this morning. They come under swift judgment. Whatever will let you rise is going down for you today. Whoever will let you rise is going down for you today. In the name of Jesus. Any man or woman, any curse, any yoke frustrating your effort to rise in life. I speak as one sent this morning. They come under swift judgment of fire. In the name of Jesus. Receive your settlement package. Receive your settlement package. Your all settlement package. Take it right now. Take it right now. Marital settlement, financial settlement, business settlement, settlement in your marriage, settlement in your finances, settlement in your career. In the name of Jesus, take your all and settlement. Sit down. It's important you know that as a child of God, that every child of God carries on his or her head the mandate of fruitfulness. The mandate of fruitfulness. Touch your head, say, I carry the mandate of fruitfulness. I carry the mandate of fruitfulness. <laughs> there is a verdict of fruitfulness resident upon your destiny. So it is an anathema as a child of God to be barren. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 said then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful. The first word that came out of the God who made you is be fruitful. Be fruitful. That was the first blessing that was released upon man. So barrenness is a curse. If fruitfulness is a blessing and barrenness is the opposite of fruitfulness, then it is a curse to be barren. I therefore decree every element of barrenness, every trace of barrenness in any area of your life is broken today. Oh, shout a louder amen. amen. Shout a life full amen. amen. You are free from barrenness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody slap your pocket. Say, My pocket shall not be barren. Use your two hands to slap it. Say, My pocket, you shall not be barren of money. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy, prophesy. Begin to command money into your pocket. I command financial breakthrough, financial buoyancy. B 
big money, huge money into my pocket. I prophesy money from the north, money from the south, from the east and the west begin to come, rush into my bank account, rush into my pocket. I come against barrenness. I cannot be barren. I am not barren. I refuse barrenness. Financial barrenness is not my portion. I am fruitful financially. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. When we are talking about fruitfulness, we are not just talking about the fruit of the womb. By the grace of God, not everybody has the problem with the fruit of the womb. We are talking about all round fruitfulness. That is what is called all round settlement. All round fruitfulness. All round fruitfulness. There are several areas of fruitfulness in a man's life and we're going to consider these few ones. Number one, the fruitfulness of the head. I'd like you to follow me. You dare the rain to be here. Some people, many people did not, could not dare the rain to be here. <laughs> so let nothing be able to stop you from receiving your blessing this morning. It's a the fruitfulness of the earth. <laughs> Psalm 23 verse 5 and 6. Say you prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. You anoint me. My head with oil. And my cup runs over. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Say, so you anoint my head with oil. My head with oil to produce. My oil head carries oil to be productive. Fruitfulness of the earth is most important to destiny realization in life. Many people are talking about the fruitfulness of the womb. That's just to multiply human beings on earth. But the fruitfulness of the head is important to every soul. I hope you know not every person, not everybody wants a child. Some couple marry without the, the entire prenuptial agreement. No child in this marriage. I read of a couple that got married and signed a prenuptial agreement of no child in the marriage. And the wife, they went as far as telling the doctor to remove the uterus. Praise God. Psalm 92 verse 10. Said, but my own, you have exalted like a horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with oil. My own shall thou exalt. Where is your own? Where is the position of the own? Have you ever seen a horn in the tail before? Say, my horn shall thou exalt. Like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You have empowered my head to be fruitful. To be productive. Hear this. The ultimate cure. To the frustration of man in life. Is the fruitfulness of the head. If your head is fruitless. Your life will be useless. A fruitless head. Is a useless life. <laughs> At the root of destiny uselessness 
is the fruitlessness of the head. Are you listening to me? At the root of destiny uselessness, cluelessness, and helplessness is the fruitlessness of the head. If your head is fruitless, your life will be useless, your life will be clueless, and your life will be helpless. Behind every poverty or poverty reading destiny is the barrenness of the head. The head cannot be empty and your life will not be proper. When you are empty headed, you will be empty handed. When you are empty headed, you will be empty handed. If you see a man complaining no money, it is because no head. That is functional, that is productive, that is fruitful. We always put money in the pocket and put money in the hand. From today, every emptiness in your head, I command it to vanish today. Hey! Hold your, your, your head with your two hands. Say, My head. Jack up, rise up, be fruitful. Hold your head, my head. Hear the word of God in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful. Open your mouth and prayer, prayer. Call the name of your children, your son, your daughters. Say. My head, you will not be barren. You will be fruitful. You will not be barren. You will not be empty. You will not be dried. Be fruitful. Be productive. Carry substance. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Make sure oil touches your head today. I brought this oil from the house. Because it's one of the oil I came from the mountain and I preserved them. I don't joke with them. I came with it from the house. That whatever is attacking the fruitfulness of your head comes under judgment this morning. Oh, you didn't hear me. Anything that won't let your head be useful to you in the name of Jesus comes under judgment this morning. Mark Zugaba doesn't have two heads. Only one head. Can Ibrahim Tarusia? Donald Trump does not have two heads. Who told you you cannot be a billionaire in dollars? Like Donald Trump. I decree today. Your head begin to get productive. Whatever makes them to call your head a coconut head. A hard head. An unfruitful head. That scenario comes to an end today. Receive a fruitful head. Say, Father, anoint me with fresh oil. Lift my head like the horn of an unicorn. Hey! Malakane Reboshia. When the head is useless, the entire life is helpless. Behind every helplessness a man finds himself is the fruitlessness of the head. Jesus had a fruitful head. The Bible says, he himself knew what to do. He always knew what to do. He has never been stranded at any point. The Pharisees talked. The tax collector, they have caught him. Because they didn't find Judas around. 
Because anytime they see Judas, they know that money bag. That's money bag. He was not around. It was just Jesus and Peter. And they thought they had found him. They, we have caught him. And they said, does your master pay tax? And Jesus pretended not to hear them. And he told Peter, he said, <coughs> he said, he said, go to the sea. Cast your hook. There is always an idea, a way out. A way out. When you see a fruitful head, he knows a way out. He is never stranded. He said, get the first fish that comes out. Open the mouth, you will see a coin there. I pray for you. You will never be stranded again. You will always know what to do. In the name of Jesus. They thought they have gotten him, but he came out with brain. Supersonic brain. Super dangerous anointing. Ballistic missile. Kajaba. Intercontinental missile brain. Supernatural ideas. There are four parts of your head that must be fruitful for your destiny to, fulfill, to be fulfilled. Four parts of your head. I'm sure some of many of us have not had this message. I received it this, this, this morning. First, number one is your brain. Your brain. Your brain. So we are focusing today on the fruitfulness of the head. Fruitful, fruit of the womb will be a jarra. But today, not everybody wants a child, but everybody wants a brain child. <laughs> it's not everything that comes in from the womb of a woman that is called a child. How many of you know that your brain is a womb? That is why when you come out with any idea, you say, my brain child. My brain child. My brain what? Because your brain gave birth to that idea. So when it's talking about fruitfulness, it's not about lining up children, impregnating your wife every year. It's about being fruitful in the brain, in the head. All right fruitfulness. Your brain. The Bible says, and God gave Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to 31, and God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sound on the seashore. Does Solomon's wisdom excel the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt? For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and the Iman, Chalcol, and Dada, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. Hey, God gave Solomon a fruitful brain. A fruitful brain. <laughs> Some two guys came up with flutter wave and eh, pestak. In Nigeria, Nigerians, not America, because you people always think that every good thing comes from there. Nigerians in Lagos, hot headed small boys, came up with an idea to pay PayPal, Pesta, they call their home Pesta. And Silicon Valley saw it that this is a competition to PayPal. They bought it with $200 million. Children that are less than 25. Two of them having $200 million cooling in the account because of a fruitful brain. And your own brain, all you think is yash, yash, yash. Yeah. If you are a man, tap your brain and say, yash, get out of here. Maleka <laughs> nosia. You should get home and look at a wall and hit your head. Every yash programming to this head. Get out! Every girl that passed you look. You size 
rise up, you are looking at the traces of their pant. You are imagining immediately. Somebody is imagining how to create app to sell. You are imagining yash, yash, yash. Some people is breast. Anything they see in the front, yeah, they lose their balance. Nakenebosia, every spirit of yash program into your brain. I curse it today. In the name of Jesus. And God filled Solomon with wisdom. Wisdom that no man could match. From today I decree that wisdom no man could match. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I release into your brain excellent spirit. The Bible says, and in this Daniel was found an excellent spirit. I decree the spirit of excellence possess your head. Possess your head. Possess your head. In the name of Jesus. about women start thinking about the world you are here as a solution to a problem if there was no need to solve a problem God will not send you here you have not found the solution that is why you are not still relevant the day you find the solution all men will seek thee the Bible said Jesus said Peter said to Jesus all men seek thee. All men seek after thee. Lift up your hands. As I finish praying, you will hold your brain with it. The idea that will make all men to seek you for solution rest on your head now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Two hundred million. You know, those guys have what I call useless money. Money that is lifeless. Just just collapse money just there. Calculate two hundred million naira and then calculate two hundred million dollars. 76 billion naira. When it was 350. Now that is 570. Can I tell you something? You don't need more than a billion naira if you want to live a normal life to survive Nigeria for 120 years. You don't need more than a billion naira to just wake up, eat, drink, drive nice car, live in a good apartment, one billion will sort it out. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You spend it for 27 years. <laughs> Say, I'm getting angry now. <laughs> Hold your breath in my brain. Receive grace. Wake up. 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 First, first Kings chapter 10, verse 23 to 24. Says so King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom which God has put in his heart. Say Father, Father my heart is opened. Heart is put wisdom in my heart. Pray that prayer with if you mean it. 
Maya Rava Sunda Nevra Haka Yabazuta. Mane Panerosia Bada. A supernatural idea. Supernatural idea. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. One idea is enough. One idea. Float away. They don't need any other idea. Enough. Pay stack that idea. And you know, they paid them the 200 million and they are still paying them service charge. Because they are the one managing it. Oh, Naraba. Imagine if Pace Tag men, uh, guys, are in this church. I will call Wiki and say, How much is the government house? <laughs> How much is the brick house? Sum it up. I want to, to move the government house away from that place. I want to plant a ministry there. Go to another place. You know, money has a spirit. You see, you never know how confident you are until you have money. <laughs> there is something about money that makes you to see that what is happening. Kilo <laughs> happen. If if your womb is fruitful and your brain is barren, you are useless. Of what use is bringing children to this world into a family that has no brain? Brainless father breeding children. Kayema Nakosi Abrahanda Rosa. A Kenusi Abrahanda. One young man came here to work with us and uh, he had talent that we needed. Then one day he said he was going to surprise me. I didn't know what, what he meant. My office was still up. So he came, he was living in Bacha in a very deplorable state. He came with five children. That was the day I sacked him. I, I'm sorry. He looks okay. No. I didn't call him for charity. I called him for work. Then he said, Daddy, I'm going to surprise you. Ah, ah, family. He brought five children. And to worsen it, they were children. They, I, they, the, the, the oldest of them was about eight years. And, and they were scattering my office. And you know that is an error. I stopped that. Uh, daddy, yeah, children. I said, what, what? I said, I hope you're not having another one again. He said, you know, uh, you can have money anytime, but you cannot have children every time. That is why I'm, I said, okay, no problem. Five. She, yeah, am I wrong? She, you knows him. They were the one that brought him. I sacked him immediately. I told she, I said, I don't need him. Not because he cannot do the work, but because he has five children. And, you know, you know, the worst part of it, he said, anytime I'm going out, I, I have to buy uh, their ch ch small chop, ice cream, and, um, and juice, and this one. Because if they don't see it, they won't sleep. So I know that if I send them to Bunabali to go and buy computer gadgets, he will, he will do a preco. Some of you, some of you, you need to be wise. You don't need prayer to solve some situation. Somebody is coming into your life and is bringing problem that is bigger than the salary, and you are accommodating him. You already have accommodated a thief because the condition that we make him steal, that we force him to steal, is on his neck. So there are people who steal by choice. There are people who steal by force. They are forced to steal because of the condition they found themselves. So, <laughs> so stealing by choice is different from stealing by force. They don't want to steal, but they can't help it. 
Why? Because the head is empty. The head is empty. The reason why politicians steal is because they have empty head. Can't you see it? They travel all over the world, see beautiful cities. They can't replicate it. You can't give what you don't have. Empty brain cannot give back to powerful project. So you need your head. Your brain is for your gain. Your brain is created for your gain. Not for nothing. Not to be thinking how to scheme. Not to be thinking how to toast a girl. Not to be thinking how to, how to sleep with a man. Not to be thinking how to snatch somebody else's husband. It is better to have a slave brain than to have a slave breast. You, you, you know, people are so myopic. People are so myopic. They look at themselves in the mirror. You see, every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you see, see babe, see babe, see babe, you are empty. It's because your brain is what? Empty. What defines you is here. Not here, not here. That is what defines you. Your worth is in your brain. And you already have it. Just pray, Father, activate it for me today. I pray as this oil drops on your head, every potential your brain carry that are sleeping, sleeping giants in your brain, they will wake up by force. They will wake up by force. Then we wake up by force in the name of Jesus. Number two part of your head that must be fruitful is your eyes. The fruitfulness of your eyes. He said, anoint your eyes with your eyes salve. Can the media help me? Anoint thy eyes salve with oil. In Job chapter 28 verse 10, he said, He cuts out channels in the rocks and his eyes sees every precious thing. His eyes sees every precious thing. A fruitful eye sees every precious thing. You know, Paul was talking, he said, the God of this age has blinded their eyes. Satan will never attack what he thinks is not useful to you. Satan will never attack. You see, when you see a fruitless eye, opportunity will be around they will never see. Opportunities will be around. It will be swallowing, I'm swimming in the midst of opportunity, yet he will not know. Jacob said, the Lord is here and I knew not. The high. The Bible says, that guy was crying because Ishmael was going to die. He was going to die and he sat there crying. And the Lord had the voice of the Lord and opened the eye. The, 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 the Bible did not say the angel of the Lord dug a well. He said he opened the eye of a guy and she saw a well. That means the well has been there. She didn't see it. A barren eye will never see opportunity coming. A barren eye will never see opportunity. In these days of social media, there is no, there is no time that job is being cheap for everybody. You don't need a certificate to be rich these days. All the guys who are doing comedy in Lagos, who are blowing everywhere, buying land in Banana Island. You, you see, before you need to be a worker of shell to buy land in Banana Island. Before you need to work with Exxon Mobil to buy land in Nikoi, in GRE, in everywhere. But now, just a comedy can buy you a land. Highs to see. Highs to see. Hi, I command your eyes to open. are blind. Your destiny is blind. Hold your two eyes. Say, Father, Father open, my eyes open my eyes by fire. By fire. Look at it. Look at it. Do like this. Say, Father, Father 
I permit you. you. Open this eyes. By fire. fire. In the name of Jesus. From today, after this anointing, you will see things. Oh, you will see precious things. Say, his eyes see it. Every precious thing. His eyes. You know, it's not every eyes that look that sees. I hope you know. Some eyes look. It takes your natural eyes to look. But it takes a spiritual eye to see. Natural eyes only look. Only spiritual eyes sees. Camera people, we understand what I'm talking about. There are lights, they look so bright, but they cannot see image when it comes to camera. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? And there are some light, they look dull. They are not as sharp. But when you put them on image like this, the camera and the lens will pick them. <laughs> I decree. You see, let me tell you something. If only what you see, only if all you have to do, all the time you own, the only time you see rather, is the time when you close your eyes and sleep and sleep in the dream. Is that you are just in the dreamland. You need to begin to see physically. To see opportunities where others see problem. To see access where others see roadblock. To see things that others don't see. To see possibilities where others are seeing impossibilities. I speak to you today. Lebradosia, hold your two eyes. Do it like this. From today, in every impossibilities others can see, your eyes will see possibilities. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You need the eyes that sees. Pray this morning. Say, Father, give me the eyes that sees. Number three, part of your head that must be fruitful, your ears. Your ears. Your ears. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, he said, your ears shall hear a word behind thee. Say, this is the way. Walk in it. Wherever you turn, whenever you turn, to the right and or whenever you turn to the left. He said, your ears shall hear. Say, Father, give me the ears that hears. You didn't say it very well. Drop everything and hold your two ears. Open your mouth and, open your mouth and begin to pray. Give me the ears that hears. That hears opportunities. That hears breakthroughs. That hears glad tidings. The ears that hears good things. That hear information that we bring about my transformation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Finally, you need the mouth that speaks. The mouth. A fruitful mouth is important. To a fruitful life. Your mouth is the gateway to your destiny. That's why Jesus said, a man is not corrupt or corrupted by what goes into his mouth, but by what comes out of his mouth. What kills sick people many times is not the sickness. It's what they say in the condition of that sickness. Your mouth. Exodus chapter 4 verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, not before then, in Proverbs 18 I think, the Bible says, life and death lies in the tongue and they that use it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it we eat his fruit. That we eat his fruit. So if you, the Bible says, your mouth bears fruit. Either the fruit of life or the fruit of death. Either the fruit of failure or the fruit of, of success. Your mouth carries fruit. 
He said, the power of death and life is in your tongue. And when you use it, you eat the fruit with which your mouth produce. And in Exodus chapter 4 verse 11 and 12, look at what the Bible says here. So the Lord said to Moses, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall say. <laughs> From today, heaven will be with your mouth. Words have sent some people to prison. Words have brought people out of prison. <laughs> There's a lady called Sally that uh, selling, uh, you know, hawking things around. I think it was Imbo State or Inugu. Enugu State, Salem. And then one day she carried a. You see, your brain is too useful to be carrying plate on it and be hawking. You see, when you see a man hawking, it's like using your brain, this microphone, to steer a bar. That is what it means. Reducing the potential of the microphone. To uh, staring stick. And say, then she put the tray by the side and carried the clothes on her shoulder and she rendered a voice, engine. And in 24 hours, a celebrity singer in America called her. What kind of voice is this? And the next 48 hours, a story changed. CNN called her, interviewed by Amman Paul. Where did he come from? The head. Lakimanosia Batanakosha. Who has reduced your head to hawking? Nero Panikatinadosia. Who is that man that has reduced your head to only think about women, to only think about men? To think that without you sleeping with men, do you know it is a programming, it's a satanic programming for a whole potential in the head to be reduced to thinking about men alone. I cause that power in your life. In the name of Jesus. The sound came from the head. And in 48 hours, there was an all-round settlement in her life. Suddenly, celebrities, DJs in, in Nigeria and America began to sign her. They began to fight for her. That was once upon a time. Maybe a few hours before that time, a girl that will run in traffic and be begging customers in the commuters with pure water. And they will say, it is not you I'm calling. Is it not an insult? Somebody carries such an engine and is reduced to hawking pure water inside traffic. And even she's using it to beg people, come and buy, it is me. And they're saying, it's not you, it's that boy behind you. Come. How many of you have done that before? Is that You just don't like to buy from that person. You call another person. A few hours before time, then all of a sudden, when her brain was activated, something came out of her mouth that announced her to the world, that gave her a platform on CNN. Whoever has reduced your head to hawking and thinking small things within your village, I caused them to die. I, somebody carry your head into your two hands. Say, my head, wake up by fire, by fire. Wake up! Wake up! Open your mouth and begin to pray. Mm. 
Mayakana Bosianta Nekete Nekuta Nekata Rekabosa Tanebrahanda Mayaneko Zekadesh Erusa Pretusa 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 Thank you, Father. A small child started. A nine-year-old boy is the is the is the is the is the richest YouTuber, youngest richest YouTuber. All this started from the age of six. He just opened toys. He doesn't know how to talk yet. Oh, we'll just open the toys. He doesn't know how to give preview because children and they put camera and she he uploaded. They uploaded it for him on YouTube. And then YouTube, big, all toy companies in the world began to beg him to advertise their toys on YouTube. He's a billionaire at nine years. Brain activated with supersonic anointing and began to function. It's not a matter of age. Lee Kaprusia Bananta Enekutaniba Ishkanebrahanda you will no longer be useless. You are not permitted to be useless. Rise up on your feet. I'm hungry. Say my brain, you must wake up today. Nerosa, tap your brain. Say wake up. What's wrong with you? Narosa ke narusia. Hear this. Hear this. If you are brilliant enough for a company to hire you and they are paying you salary, they are only compensating you for suspending your brain. Salary is a compensation for suspending your brain. Marosha ke manushia. Makanoshi manikatanda. Erat toriam berus ke divraha. Mana tori kale. I came with holy hunger. That from today, some of you in the next three months, you will sack your boss. When they are looking for how to streamline their staff, you say, don't worry, I will help you. I will help you. I have resigned. And also, I have helped you to employ three people that you, give me three people that you, that you think they are useless. I will employ them. Malakai Abu Shanda. One young man employed people in Abuja. What does this do? He developed apps. So, one of my friends said he went to Abuja and he went into the hall to see one of his friends and he saw heads of young men in a hall, like a tent, a, an event tent center, a hall. That is their office. And all of them carrying MacBook, MacBook Pros. They're working. He said, what are they doing? He said, they are working for me. I brought them from Lagos, about 100 of them. He said, the list of them that you see here is collecting 500,000 every month from me. So imagine what is coming to that guy without applying to any company. Brain activated. Mouth. As I have not finished this message. I think we have to go because of time and because of the condition, I decree to you will hold your brain. Amen. Father, open up my head. Let my head be fruitful. Today, you are not holding any womb. If you are looking for children, come later. Today, we will give back to brain children. Brain what? Brain. Say, Father, Father, by your anointing, what can you not do? Open my head. Let my head be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. Let my head be fruitful. Touch your eyes. Father, give me the eyes that see. The eyes that sees opportunity. Touch your mouth. Give me a mouth and 
the wisdom that my enemies cannot gain. Say, a mouth that speaks prosperity. Give me the ears that hears. Open your mouth and pray. Pray with all intensity. Make sure you are engaging. This is a prayer that must be answered. I refuse to, to serve, to continue as a slave. Open my brain to receive understanding. Open my brain for supernatural ideas. Let my head be fruitful. Let my head be fruitful. Let my head be fruitful. Lake paneto kusa de karash. Rana na na rosi andadesh. Leke de rebo sebre kina rosa. Eka neto ri andeka yibaha. Jonake na rosa deka. Eka ne rosa bre kina rosa. Give me the wisdom you gave to Solomon. Give me the understanding you gave to Solomon. Give me the brain you gave to Daniel. Give me the mouth you gave to Jesus. Anoint my eyes to see. Anoint my ears to hear. Mare paneos Abraham. Pray that prayer as if you are on life support. Fight for your destiny. Refuse to give up. Something must go on with you today. There must be a revolution. 